Sky sent us a nice question about fire, talking about fire, and she wanted to know um, what happens to all the animals during a fire and do, do many animals lose their lives? Now, Sky, I can tell you that uh, I've never seen an animal, a dead animal in a fire. Um, unless it was already dead before or it's injured in some way, I've never seen a big animal or, or a, even a baby animal die in a fire. The reason for that is that fire has been part of this wilderness here since the dawn of time, since before animals even evolved to their current forms. And I think animals have got a, a natural fear and uh, habit of moving away from the fire. Wildfires, generally speaking, will announce their arrival with very tall plumes of smoke into the air and sometimes many weeks before they actually arrive in a particular place. That's in ancient times. In modern day times, fires are very restricted to certain areas and animals literally can just cross a road or they can move out onto and around fires from a fi along a fire break and they do so very effectively. Even when fires are burning towards a fence line where you'd think that animals can't go anywhere, they move out along the fence line and they get around the fire. So much so and they're so comfortable with fire that I've seen rhino and leopard walking behind the fire and walking out and for some reason rhino quite enjoy cropping grass rhizomes and grass that has just been burnt um, and leopard will be moving out onto the onto the the, the the burnt areas looking for those insects and those other small the little creatures not big mammals like impala and kudu and you know elephant um, that uh, that were caught up in the flames and couldn't get away. Now, there are some stories of animals being caught in fires, but I think the same with anything. There's a certain, uh, there will always be a certain um, group or population that is in the wrong place at the, ro at the wrong time. And it's them that will, will generate in us this fear of fire. You do see horror pictures of animals that have been caught up in fires and burnt, but in my opinion even dinosaurs were burnt by fires and it's just a common thing. It's just, it's inevitable that some animals will be caught up. Just like a flood, I suppose, or a mudslide or an earthquake, there will be um, there will be some animals that uh, that basically don't make it. Oh, this is a big term of mine. Now, ML, you want to know if lodge staff need to get involved with the firefighting? Absolutely, uh, ML. There's no one else out here except for lodge staff. The closest fire engine from me right now is about, I suppose, 60 miles away. 60, 70 miles away, and then there's only two of them. Um, whereas the closest water bowser with an engine on it is, you know, about five miles away from where we are. So definitely we all get involved in fires. It's become more sophisticated over the years. There's fire marshals and fire chiefs, and there's uh, who knows what other uh, protocols, and that's because people have lost their lives over the last few years. Um, I've been I've been here in the Sabi Sands now for about two decades and about 30 to 40 people have lost their lives in just this area to fires and so it's a, it's a proper danger and it's because of that that fire control and fire management has become such a sophisticated science. I mean people are trained uh, how to manage fires and manage people in fires. So yes absolutely we do help, yes it's sophisticated um, and you know, we can expect to share fires with you over the next couple of winters, I promise. Now, this termite mound.